Bye, boy. On this trip, we thought we'd go back to basics and grab a Quintrex Top Ender Pro 540, have a bit of a boys camping trip and whack some jewies. So we had a pretty elaborate plan with this boat. We were gonna take it to Fraser Island. We had maybe some, some plans to go down to Coffs. As it turned out, the jewies were actually on the tube right off the Gold Coast. And we knew a local bloke, Will Kitchen, who said, mate, hey, get out here. I've got the mark, the jewies are firing. So it's never a guarantee with jews. And we thought this is probably our best bet at catching a fish. So we woke up early this morning. It's bloody freezing here in the Gold Coast. So we got, we got the fire going now. It's the middle of winter. And we met Will down at the boat ramp. He was there with his old TLT 25 and some old Shimano thing, which I used to have when I was about I think about 12 years old, we had no anti-reverse, but he was quietly confident. Anyway, Will snuffles up a few little marks for us. We get to the bait grounds and it's on. We fill the live bait tank of the Quinny really quickly with about 25 yakas. And from then we take him into Will's little spot. After a couple of drifts, we're getting nothing, nothing, nothing. And we end up using up all of our live baits just on brim. Brim are just belting the shit out of our yakas. The current's ripping down. Will reckons that's the time to get them. So we had about 25 liveys before and we're down to our last four. So fuck, we're running low on liveys. We're just drifting along this edge. And the last three runs, we've been belted. Um, Will missed the first two and I just, just grabbed the rod then and yeah, <laughs> whack, whack, whack. And then nothing. So fingers crossed we can get it done in these next couple of drifts. Otherwise, we're going back to the backgrounds. Anyway tide changes and the current starts ripping along and then the whole thing, the whole game just changed. Every single pass we did, we were catching jewies or getting bumps from jewies or losing jewies. Yes. So much so that the boys even got out the soft plastics, the gulp soft plastics, the nuclear chickens were doing the damage and the catchy catchy octopus style jigs and even catching them on those and Will said he'd never, never seen that before at this particular spot. So it was pretty awesome. So after a pretty, uh, pretty epic day, I think every single one of us caught a fish. I caught a couple of jewies. Nick the cameraman even caught a couple of jewies. Will caught a bunch of jewies. He'll be undersized, but still good fun. And they fight hard, they really fight up. So it's been a really fun session. Yep. First drift, lost it. And then just then double hook up. One on the catchy catchy. Trevor got absolutely buckled. And, um, and this one on the live bait. So sorry, Trevor, I think I sniped your fish, mate. So how did the top ender perform? Well, I think it was a bit of a surprise package for all of us really. No one was expecting a boat that cost around the $50,000 mark to perform so well. It's 5.68 meters long, 2.3 in the beam, and has a max horsepower of 140 horsepower. So on the back, we're running with a Mercury 115 four stroke. She carries a 95 liter underfloor fuel tank and can take six people. We had four on it today and heaps of camera gear and heaps of fishing gear and it wasn't cramped at all. These are actually some seriously comfy little seats and the good thing about them as well, they're on, um, on pole mounts so you can actually move them around the boat to the positions you want. And if it's just you and a mate going, you can take one out, leave the other one at home. Take them all out, just leave the one. So it's kind of a really versatile seating setup and it works well. The boat weighs a measly 638 kilos on its own. And that is just awesome because it means anyone with even a small tow vehicle can take this thing along on trips. The top sides are three mil, the bottom sides are four mil, and the transfer material is four mil too. So what do we love about this boat? Having so much storage in the casting platform and under the floor was a godsend. There are three insulated fish boxes, two in the cockpit, one on the casting platform, and we held ice in there all day. We, even, we kept all our lunch in there and the ice stayed perfectly. They're also all fully drained, so at the end of the day, just spray them out with fresh water, a bit of soap, and they're all clean. So along with the ample storage, another first impression which I've noticed is these big wide gunnels. Now, this is something that I think Quintrexes have been screaming at for, for a long time. Wide gunnels make such a big difference, especially in small boats where you sort of, you're in and out, you're climbing on, and especially in the side console as well, you can actually use these as seating, loading on eskies and that sort of stuff. 
Handling though is where this boat really came into its own. This model is also fitted with some beautiful hydraulic steering. It turns really nicely and the side console setup works well. No cavitation, no banging, and the big flared bow kept us dry all day. It really did blow us away uh, with how well this hull performed. For a small boat, it's also got quite a big live well. As I said, we fit about 25 yakkers into that thing, which was, um, which was pretty impressive. All right, where could this boat improve? Well, rod storage definitely was its kryptonite. For a boat that's called the Top Ender, I was hoping for a lot more rod storage and it kind of let us down in that department. We had four rod holders on top of the gunnels and they were plastic as well, so we didn't really have much faith in them, so we were holding, holding all our baits as we made those drifts along for the jewies. Somewhere else where this boat could perform was probably the batteries were down quite low in the bilge. They were on an elevated platform, which was good, but they are down where a lot of salt water is coming through and over time that, that's never a good solution. The cabling that runs through the batteries and up to the battery switch was also exposed and I'd love to have a little bit more, like a neater setup there. It would make the boat look so much more refined. Overall, we've had such an epic trip in this boat. That was some of the, probably the best jury fishing I've ever had in my entire life. And the surprise pack of the top ender, like what an, what an awesome little rig. I'd have no qualms loading this thing up with all the boys, all the beers, and just cruising around Australia in this thing. If you, if you set it up with some lockable hatches, it would be absolutely clutch for Cape York trips, the NT, anything like that. Another good thing is you don't have to be too precious about it. You're not worried about scratching a $200,000 fiberglass boat. Bring it up on the beach, put it on the rocks. It's just, it's just the perfect boat for this sort of touring. I've never seen that in my life. 